Lift off. After all, the legendary booster of SpaceX's Mighty Falcon, which successfully launched and landed last week in 19 flights, won't make it back intact to Cape Canaveral. This is truly a tragedy for this Booster 9 as it collapsed in such an unfortunate way. So why? Why is the SpaceX Falcon booster still getting destroyed by waves after hundreds of successes? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. A piece of America's space history is now on the ocean's floor. During its return voyage to Port Canaveral in central Florida, a SpaceX Falcon 9 first stage booster toppled over and broke in half. This particular booster, tail number Bone 1058, was coming back from its record-breaking 19th mission when it had its fatal fall. The rocket lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on December 23, carrying 23 Starlink satellites. The booster made a successful landing eight and a half minutes after launch on the drone ship, just read the instructions, which was stationed east of the Bahamas. SpaceX said in a statement on social media that it succumbed to high winds and waves. The system that is usually used to stabilize a booster in transit, known as the Octagrabber, works fine for Falcon 9 boosters. But the rocket met its fate when it hit intense wind and waves, resulting in failure of a partially secured Octograbber less than 100 miles from home. An important observation lies in the top left area, where chains hang from the attachment point. This suggests that the usual latch system may not have been compatible with this specific booster. One plausible explanation could be that the corner of the rocket was positioned too high for the grabber to latch onto, potentially due to the landing legs on the opposite side being too low. This can be because the booster not maintaining an upright position after landing. Comparing this video booster 1058 seems to exhibit a slight lean to the left. It's plausible that the pitching and rolling of the barge during the landing caused one or more landing legs to hit the deck with greater force, leading to increased compression and a leaning effect on the booster. Kiko Donchev, SpaceX's vice president of launch, also confirmed, Tippy boosters occur when you get a certain set of landing conditions that lead to the legs having uneven loading. Heavy wind or sea state then cause the booster to teeter and slide, which can lead to even worse leg loading. This means that the special octagrabber designed to batten down rocket boosters while they taxi to shore was not able to latch onto the Bone 1058. To consider, Octagrabber, which is the Falcon 9 securing robot, is the name given to a series of robots that operate on SpaceX's drone ships to remotely secure Falcon 9 boosters upon landing offshore. After a booster landing, Octagrabber is remotely driven out of its blast-protected garage on the drone ship and positioned underneath the booster. It uses four arms that then raise up and attach to the base of the Falcon 9 known as the OctaWeb, from where the robot takes its name. The Falcon 9 booster has a very low center of gravity after a flight as the rocket is primarily made up of propellant tanks which drain during the mission. This means the bulk of the remaining weight is on the engine section, the OctaWeb at the base. The OctaGrabber robot latches onto this, securing the Falcon 9 for transportation. Recovery teams still have to board the drone ship to perform other post-landing tasks, but the robot allows for a safer and more efficient recovery process. However, the Octagrabber's weakness is that it cannot work well when there are too many winds or waves. To those who ask why was the booster in rough seas, SpaceX keeps pressing the parameters on their Starlink launches, and one of those is the weather. A launch needs good weather at the pad, at altitude, no high-speed winds, and at the landing zone. Hitting the trifecta 100 times a year is difficult, so SpaceX has to keep looking for the limits of where, what, and how the Falcon 9 can operate. Actually, this is not the first time a tragedy like this has happened. In 2019, SpaceX landed its three Falcon Heavy boosters without flaw for the first time, but then a stormy sea also knocked one of them down. As conditions worsened with 8 to 10 foot swells, the booster began to shift and ultimately was unable to remain upright, the company said at that point. While we had hoped to bring the booster back intact, the safety of our team always takes precedence. We do not expect future missions to be impacted. Sadly, that just happened to the most powerful rocket of the Falcon family. 
This will be a valuable lesson for SpaceX. The company stated that newer Falcon boosters have upgraded landing legs with the capability to self-level and mitigate this type of issue. We came up with self-leveling legs that immediately equalize leg loads on landing after experiencing a severe tippy booster two years ago on Christmas, Kiko Donchev wrote on X. Looking at B-1058 status after destroyed, most of the engine section of the rocket appeared to be intact, judging from photos and three of the four landing legs jutted into the air, propped open as they were following the booster's landing. Looking from the top of the booster remnants, wires were drawn out and strewn over the edge of the drone ship dragging in the water as the vessel made it back to its dock. While B-1058 will never fly again, SpaceX fully intends to preserve what's left and understand what they can. We are planning to salvage the engines and do life leader inspections on the remaining hardware, said John Edwards, the vice, the vice president of launch vehicles and Falcon 9 product director at SpaceX. There is still quite a bit of value in this booster. We will not let it go to waste. This is really necessary because B-1058 is a piece of America's space history. Beyond its status as the flight leader in SpaceX's Falcon fleet with 19 completed missions, B-1058 also held the distinction of launching astronauts from American soil for the first time since the end of the Space Shuttle program in 2011. Former NASA astronauts Bob Behenken and Doe Hurley were the first to climb aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft to fly to the International Space Station on May 30, 2020. That historic mission, dubbed Demo-2, began the illustrious mission career of B-1058 that spanned more than three years. To mark its landmark flight, the booster was emblazoned with both the official NASA logos, nicknamed the Meatball and the Worm. This became the first crewed flight in NASA's commercial crew program which began a new chapter of the agency purchasing commercial services to shepherd astronauts to and from the orbiting outpost. When the booster was being prepared for the Demo-2 mission, NASA and SpaceX determined the loss of crew, LOC probability to be 1 in 276, beating the program required threshold of 1 in 270. Crew Dragon Endeavour docked with the ISS, 19 hours after launching from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. While the Demo-2 flight was the only crewed mission using B-1058, the booster did support one additional mission to the space station when it launched a Cargo Dragon spacecraft, designated 208, on SpaceX 21's Commercial Resupply Services, CRS-21, mission in December 6, 2020. The other 17 flights of this booster included the first and third of SpaceX's transporter missions, carrying an array of CubeSats and NanoSats to orbit, as well as 14 missions to send up satellites for SpaceX Starlink Internet Constellation. Now with B-1058 gone, three boosters B-1060, B-1061, and B-1062 stand as the current fleet leaders, each having reached 17 missions, B-1060 in September and the others late last month and early in December. And behind them, stand two others with 15 flights to their credit, three more which have already passed the 10 mission mark and a dozen others, which are either repeat flyers as single-stick Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy side boosters, or are awaiting the opening launches of their careers in the coming days and weeks. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high-quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.